Today we have five fun and simple icebreaker games for you to play at your next youth group. And make sure you check the description below for how you can get the PDF with all the instructions for these games. Welcome to the Ministry Coach Podcast. Thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate you being here. We talk all things youth ministry. We go from leadership and games and Camp. camps, all kinds of stuff. If you can think of something youth ministry wise, we've probably done an episode on it. And if we haven't, I'm sure it's coming up soon. So make sure you subscribe here to our YouTube channel or on our podcast if you're listening there. My name is Jeff Lascola. This is Kristen Lascola. And today we're talking all about icebreakers. Yes. So sometimes we like to do a little icebreaker before the big game itself. So it's just kind of like a fun, more entertainment, crowd pleaser kind of thing. Something to most of the time watch because not everybody can play an icebreaker. Some icebreakers are group icebreakers, but for the most part, it's a couple kids up on the stage doing something kind of funny or entertaining to kind of get the night started. Mm -hmm. Um, One tip, if you're going to start incorporating icebreakers into your midweek program, just make sure you are really careful with your time because they're fun and it can kind of get away from you. And all of a sudden you're like, shoot, we only have 10 minutes to play our group game. So you really have to strategize, but it's just kind of a fun way to get the energy flow going, get people excited. So today we're going to talk about my five favorite. Number one, I did not make this up. So if you're the creator of this, please comment and let me know. But we've been playing this, I mean, for years, so I don't remember where I got it, but I'm so glad I did because it is called Candysaurus Rex. And you have two kids come up. I always feel like it's easy to get people excited if you do boys versus girls oh, because you candy. Well, we are. I'll get there <laughs> because then they already have a team to root for. Mm. You know what I mean? And if you have a smaller group, you can give like maybe they didn't actually have to play the game, but if they're on the girls and the girls won, they get a piece of candy, like just because the girls won. So candy Saurus Rex works like this. You have two kids come up on stage, a guy and a girl, if that is going to be your teams and you have them put their hands up like this, like a, <laughs> like T-Rex, a T-Rex little mini hands, little mini, mini hands. And then you get some tape and you tape them around so that their arms stay. So like across like their forearms, so their arms yes, are stuck across up. Across like their forearms, around their back, across their forearms, around their back. If you're listening, not watching, you might want to watch because you can see my <laughs> little T-Rex hands. And once everyone's taped up, what you do is you just like pinata the stage. You just scatter candy all over <laughs> it. And It's helpful if each T-Rex has like maybe a partner to hold a bucket for them or a bag and they have to get down and any way possible, any way possible and pick up the candy. So you could put like 60 seconds on the clock, play some really fun music. If there was a Jurassic Park theme song remix, like the club (laughs) version, that would be (laughs) awesome. If you have the capability to do that, would you? (laughs) <laughs> would you club that remix and send it to us and we'll send it to everyone. Cause that'd be a lot of fun. Yeah. And then whoever gets the most piece of candy in their bucket wins. So the prize could be they win their bucket of candy and mm-hmm. maybe they go share it or all the candy goes to that team. I've done that before where it's like not just the candy you collected, but every single piece of candy that was in play you know, goes to your team and everyone. Do you just do it. two? Like if it was guys versus girls, you just do one guy and one girl, or do you do like multiple in each team up there? Um, no, just one. Okay. Cause you want to be able to focus enough okay. on like what's going on. I don't know. I, even as I say it though, you could do a few, yeah. like that would be really funny. Your I guess. stage allows that I suppose. Yeah. And then depending how much time and tape, if you have, you could play a few rounds, but yeah, it's just kind of a fun visual icebreaker that we've enjoyed in the past and it's very easy. All you need is candy and tape. Number two, this one is called tongue tied. So this is a variation of the game. My favorite game. Do you know my favorite game? Well, no, your student's favorite game No, is my Predator. favorite game in life. 
not oh. not youth group game. My favorite game to play. Nerds? No, I am good at that though. I don't know. No, I'm not good at it, but I like it. Anomia. Oh yeah. Okay. So if you've not ever played the game Anomia, <laughs> order it on Amazon. Should we link it below? Yeah, why not? Why not? It's fun. And it's cheap. It's loud. I'm loud. Well, you're loud. <laughs> I'm very loud. It is you might make some enemies, but it is so fun. So basically the concept of Anomia, if you have never played it, it's a it's not a card game in the sense that like playing cards, but it's cards with words and symbols on them. And everyone flips when it's their turn, you flip a card. If your symbol matches someone else's symbol on their card, you have to say what's on their card before they can say what's on your card. So if Jeff and I both have diamonds in the center and his card says name a Muppet and mine says shampoo, if I could say Kermit the Frog before he could say Pantene Pro V, <laughs> you know, so it's a variation of that. So we don't do the card thing, but you have two people come up on stage again, guy and girl would work great. And it sounds easy because you're right. like, I can name a billion Muppets. I bet you can. But when you're under pressure and the time is going and everyone's watching, you get tongue tied. Yeah. That's why we call it tongue tied. So it's like the Miss Piggy, <laughs> but it's so hard to get it out. So we put something on the screen instead of a card, the students look up and it might say Muppet. Mm -hmm or a Muppet baby. I don't know, whatever. They both have the same one though. They're not, cause in, in Anomia you're doing opposites. Right. This one is just the same okay. one and you could go rapid fire. So as soon as have someone keeping score. So as soon as someone says, Miss Piggy, click to the next one, animal sound, oink, click to the so next one. So are you just one. to keep track of who gets the most of the, of the Yeah. Total? So you okay. don't like stop the round when someone gets gotcha. it. It's just most in 60 seconds and someone's keeping score of who said the most. So it's just kind of fun to have to think really quick on your feet. And it's a game that can be played on the stage. You could do as many rounds as you want. I feel like this game could even be the game, mm -hmm. you know, especially if you needed an indoor game and it's like raining outside, snowing outside, depending where you're at. And you're like, we got to do something inside. Yeah, that's fun. That's high energy. And it also reveals a lot about who you are on the inside, because some of the things that come out when you're under yeah, pressure, you're like, like why that, would I say that? Yeah, it's like a Rorschach test or ink blot where all of a sudden you're saying like what it looks like. And it's like, whoa, how did that come out of me? Like, it'll be uh name a movie and you're like driving miss daisy and you're like <laughs> how did that how did that come out of you like why was yeah. that the one my mind went it to? like searches the deepest parts of your brain i swear i've never even seen that movie <laughs> it's weird so yeah and you might just have to do a little prep on the front end of Categories. like on your pro presenter um getting enough prompts if you need ideas you could just look at the anomia cards right. you know I wrote down shampoo brand because I know that's one of the Anomia ones, an amphibian, an <laughs> animal sound, a Muppet, a Disney movie, a brand of technology, something like that. So yeah, that is called tongue type. This one, number three, we haven't played in a long time, but I was looking through my game logs and I saw it. And I'm like, I want to do this <laughs> on Tuesday. It's really fun. So it's called human pretzel and you get two groups and this is like, cause we were I saying, think I've seen this one before. This is more of like everyone can play or a lot of people can play. So back in the day when my youth group was a little smaller, I remember everyone could play. Mm -hmm. Now I'd probably pick like 20 for each team. So 20 boys, 20 girls, 15, 10, whatever mm -hmm. you've got. And I don't know if you remember this from when you were little. I feel like we used to do this in school is like everyone kind of stands in a huddle facing each other and they just put their hands yes. in and you grab a hand and you become this big human knot. And then you turn on some fun music and there's leaders like all the girl leaders and all the guy leaders helping direct traffic and you help the kids untangle until they're in a circle and they can't untangled break untangled circle. Yes. And I can't remember. Did both teams go in the, oops, do both teams go in the giant mix of people or is it like the guys are over here in their group and the yeah. girls are over and here? And then whoever so untangles separate. first wins. Okay. And then you have to make sure that you don't grab 
the same person's hands. Like your right hand yeah. can't be grabbing and their left hand can't be grabbing for the same person. Right. Because then, you then all of a sudden your you're like, oh, circle. we have our own circle. Yeah. But you, can, you can't let go at any point. Like right. let go and re-grab. So it's like kids have to go like under people's arms or under people's legs. And right. then it's okay. Like if not, everyone's facing the same way in the right. circle. Cause I feel like sometimes someone will end up like back, like, or their arms are crossed. Yeah. Which is funny. okay. Right. Cause you can't really, you right. know, just as long as the people are in a circle and it's, I always think when we start playing this game, it's impossible. It's po- always possible. Yeah, it's they crazy. can always do it. And it's so helpful. Like the kids just stand there, don't know what to do. So make sure you have leaders helping like, they can like see the puzzle from like a bird's right. eye view kind of of like, okay, no, you need to go under here. Right. And like, okay, just stay there. He needs to come over behind this you. This is another one that if it's a small enough group, it could be an icebreaker. If it's a bigger group, this is a full on game because it can take a while to get that completely undone, doesn't it? Yeah. And another way you could do it is like by small group. So mm. if you want to play it for your actual game, you can do it by small group. Or like with your student leadership team for a smaller kind of feel, but it's kind of like a team building activity too, yeah. I would say, but it's really fun. Make I sure love everyone one. has deodorant and is good hygiene. <laughs> you're going to be really up close and personal. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Number four, cup stack competition. So this one, I don't know if you guys remember when cup stacking was like really a <laughs> thing and probably still is, but get some red solo cups, bro. Hey man, party. And you want to explain to them what the cup stack pattern is going to be. So usually what I do is I set up two tables up on the stage and I give a stack of cups and then I demonstrate what the pattern is going to be. It could be like five on the base, Mm. then four, then three, then two, then one. And they have to stack it without it falling, obviously. And then undo the whole thing back to the single stack. So if you ever watch cup stacking competitions on YouTube, (laughs) you'll see what I mean. They set it all up and then tear it all down really fast. The first one to get it up and down before the other person is the winner. And they, it's hard because again, you're under pressure. You're trying to go really fast and, um, those cups are lightweight. So they kind of fall and people are cheering and excited to watch again. It's another great spectator icebreaker, And it's really fun. And then, you know, don't forget to always throw in those leader rounds too. Mm. I think this is a really good game where you can do a couple leader rounds. My leaders are always begging for it. They love to play the games and the kids like watching their leaders have fun. Do you do the rule where if you drop one of the cups off the table, you have to start all the way over again? You know, as I was talking about it, I'm like, that kind of sounds vaguely familiar. So that's up to you. You can either (laughs) let them start where they left off or is it like if are you saying like if a cup hits the ground yeah or if a cup just like falls onto the table no 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 it goes off the table and onto the ground it was i remember that being like a penalty i feel like that sounds like the official rule book right. for like the olympics of cup hey stacking. gotta be official man yeah well it's up to you i mean whatever you however you want to do uh the penalties <laughs> <laughs> okay and the last one number five is called sync up And I learned this at a camp actually, and it stuck with me because I won. It was really fun. (laughs) Do you remember this from Forest Home? It was a winter camp and basically they'd have two people. Oh yeah. Oh, this is a fun one. Yeah. From the same team come up. Right. So you want to have two girls on stage and you want to have two boys on stage. They're going to go back to back and then you're going to give them a prompt. So I remember mine still because I won and it was a type of shark. And so you say type of shark, ready? Three, two, one. And they jump to face each other. Tiger. Great white. I was oh going to say gosh. great white, but tiger shark seems so much cooler. So I went with but that. But you are supposed to say what you think I will say, <laughs> not to you. I th- cool. Okay. I would have said baby shark if I was going what I thought oh. you would say. That would have been good. (laughs) Well, Hammerhead was my second, so we were way off. Okay, so we lost. See how that works? So if they turn around, face each other, they have to say something and answer. If it's the same, if it's synced up, then they get a point for their team. If not, they don't. So here's some ideas for you. 
type of shark. You've got that one for free. <laughs> a theme park, an app, a streaming service. It could really be anything. You don't want to do something that's like too narrow, like famous mouse or famous mice. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's like two options that people might say. So you might want to say like... Disney princess, yeah. you know, something a little more narrow, but then also not something so broad. That's like, right. How, how are you ever going to get the color? Same? Like that might be too broad. Yeah. So something that has some typical answers. And the good thing with icebreakers is you don't have to have 20 categories because you're only going to play a couple of rounds. Right. So just come up with a few really good ones you could do some that are specific to your group, like name a leader yeah. or something like that, that people in your group would know. Mm -hmm. And that one's really fun and it's quick and bonus. You don't need any supplies. Mm -hmm. You just need to pre-plan a couple of prompts. So yeah, that's five. Real and easy. Yeah. You can start those, your favorite one, uh, this week if you want and kind of, Maybe it's a new element that's sort of surprising. Maybe your program schedule has gotten a little predictable and they know exactly what to expect. Well, this week it might be fun to throw in an icebreaker because it feels like you're playing two games, yeah. but you're not. Again, make sure that your time schedule is a little tighter. That was a mistake I used to make a ton is let my icebreakers go too long, then try to scramble a game. And then, oh no, do we have to cut a song for right. worship? My talk and small groups and pick up. It was like, <laughs> felt like we were in fast forward the whole time. So start on time, get the fun juices flowing. Mm -hmm. And yeah. It's kind of cool too, because we did an episode on upfront games, which is somewhat similar, but the neat thing about it is you can kind of highlight individuals. Mm -hmm. Whereas you play dodgeball, it's like, well, you know, your, your names aren't being known, right. whereas an icebreaker... It's like a focal only, point. Right. You're only mm -hmm. or only bringing up a couple kids, and you're probably getting their names when they come up, especially if you have a little bit bigger group or something, but just yeah. a way to have them shine for a minute. For sure. I like that. kind of cool. That perspective. So, yeah, make sure you check out our Upfront Games episode as well. Um, and now we have the question of the day, which kind of flows into this. It does? Yeah. So it is, what was your most awkward first date which is kind of like an icebreaker if you oh will. i see okay you spun that yeah okay so i went out with this guy that i met at church when i was in college he was so sweet he was a very nice guy he wanted to go to the local pool hall <laughs> um i don't know i don't play pool but i was up for it and he was just real nervous the whole time and a little goofy and a little awkward <laughs> And we, he wanted to go get like snacks or something. And so we go up to the, um, counter and he, the girl was like, or he goes, can I have a, um, a large drink please? And she's like, sure. What kind would you like? And he like froze and he like looks at me <laughs> and then he looks at her and he goes, a large one. <laughs> <laughs> And I, she just, she didn't say anything. And I was like, oh, I think she means like, what type of drink do you want, large? You'll he have goes, to forgive my friend. Oh, he's a little slow. He's like, um, I'll have Coke. And then he kept offering me some. I didn't take any. And then, because like, get two Cokes. This is a first date. I don't want to share your Coke already. And then, you know, like the like blue, it was this blue chalk that you put at the oh, end of yeah, the pull yeah. stick. Yeah. You like twist it while he like licks at me <laughs> and he grabs it and he just puts it on his nose <laughs> and he twists it. And then he just like licks at me so awkward. and the end of his nose was blue. <laughs> Did he have a like, big nose? I don't, I don't, it was average, but <laughs> I. Could he like, have hit a pool ball with his nose? No. Okay. <laughs> but I, I was like. I know you're trying to be funny, but like, <laughs> I, what do I do? Just go, ha, 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 You have chalk on your nose, mister. I don't know. It just, the vibe wasn't right. At what right. point in the night were you like, this is it? No, um, no second date. Around, around the drink time. Okay. Like I, I'm, a, you can make a mistake. Ha ha funny, but it was I just. I make mistakes all the time. Yeah. But there was just something about the vibe. Mm. It was just uncomfortable. But he was very nice. 
Well, I got set up on a blind date a while back, and this is, I think, the one and only blind date I've ever... Oh, no, I take that back. Oh, I had another one, but this was definitely the worst. Met a couple friends at a restaurant about an hour from where I lived at the time, so it was a little bit of a drive to get there, and probably within the first couple minutes, I was like, nope, not... This is... There's no second date. <laughs> this girl wouldn't talk. Like... And part of me is not like, oh, she's, she's shy. You know, I can understand that. But the thing is we were with the, this couple that were her friends, plus another couple, also her friends that I didn't know. And me. So I thought if anybody, I should be nervous because I don't know most of you people here, you people. <laughs> and yet she did. She only didn't know me, but she was super quiet and it was just painful conversation. <laughs> like I couldn't, like an so open-ended question like still stuff. would somehow be a one word <laughs> answer. And so after dinner, I'm like, thank goodness, like I'm heading out of here. And my friends were like, let's go bowling or miniature golf. And I was just like, oh, in my head, I'm thinking, no, like I don't want to <laughs> make this night go any That's longer. That's why you always drive yourself. That's I a did. Oh, and boy. then they said, she can go, I don't remember her name, but she can go with you. And I'm thinking, oh no, <laughs> the only thing more painful is to be alone with her. And it was, it was just like pulling teeth, getting any conversation. So then we went to a bowling alley. It was closed. I thought bullet dodged. I think that's when they were like, no, let's go miniature go. I was like, oh, so they wanted to do that. I think that was closed. And then they're like, let's go watch a movie. And oh so I'm like, gosh. it was like they kept trying Let to make die. this work. And Let I I should have just texted them and said, hey, I'm out. But I, I, I put my my effort in and went the whole night and then later that night i got a text that said she's really indie Ah! (laughs) and i'm like no i I can't probably because you're the first person she had a non-conversation with yeah i was the first person that ever talked to her and they said well you know give it a few dates i'm like no no Mm. no you just know yeah i really am interested in hearing from our community Please put in the comments, what was your most either awkward date or awkward first date? Usually it's the first date, I feel yeah. like. I've probably been the awkward first date for somebody Someone's else. Someone's probably telling a story about you right I hope now. so. I'm sure there's a lot of good ones. <laughs> <laughs> Our first date was at Denny's. Yeah, it was awkward. So there you go. I don't uh, think it was that awkward. It was fun. Well, it all ended well. But if I think if we didn't get married, it would have been like, I can't believe they went to Denny's and that was about it. I don't think we really did anything else. <laughs> Well, anyways, this is a a comment from one of our viewers and or listeners. And this is actually from our podcast channel on Apple Podcasts. And the person's name is Iveth1330. And she says, love it. I love this podcast. Exactly what I was looking for. It's informative, funny, and fun to listen to. I have listened to every episode and replay my favorite. Well, thank you so Ooh, much, Iveth. That's we so appreciate sweet. you leaving a rule. Thanks, and Iveth. We hope that... It sounds like you said, leaving a rule. Leaving a rule. <laughs> and if the rest of you can leave a rule, too, we'd appreciate it. Hey, thank you guys so much for watching and listening. And, and we we'll will see, see you next, next time. time. <laughs>